this will make much more sense when you know my full story. And I apologize. It just, this is how it had to unfold. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this is different now because that revelation of that word coming to me back all those years ago in Indiana. Um, so I've been like, like I said, I've been just as God's been patient with me waiting on me. There's, a, there's an elevation song, uh, in, uh Maverick city song <laughs> called wait on you. It's on the playlist. It's again, one of those songs that just oh, awesome. Um, yeah, so good. Uh, yeah, I'd love it for people to just play that playlist, but, uh, um, just as God's been patient with me, he, he, he has guided me through these last several months and, and shown me how to be patient. And, and it hasn't been a struggle. I have to say, I have been patient. Um, I knew and felt and, and had conversations with God. I knew he was working. I knew he was working me. I knew what was on the other side of this. Um, you know, again, I don't want to allude too much to the other, other story, but I, uh, there's, there's many things I know now that I didn't know before. Um, and I have no doubt that's what's on the other side of this for me is greatness. And I'm not talking about when I'm in heaven. I'm talking about here on earth. Um, so <clears throat> sorry. Um, as I alluded to things are, uh, they're better than they were a month ago for me. I still struggle with a lot of the same things, the identity issues. Um, but at some point I had felt, and Doug and I had talked about this, uh, from when this started for me, um, I felt initially that I was being protected from myself. God was protecting from myself. Um, I couldn't get up and start doing it. If, if he showed me any part of his plan for me or indicated what's next or I knew what's next or felt what was next, knowing me, I would start going after it. I would start doing it. Now, I may not follow it through all the way, like you said, um, <clears throat> but I know myself that I would have started on that path and I wasn't able to, I wasn't healthy enough to do that physically or mentally or emotionally. So I really felt that God was protecting me from myself, uh, over those first, especially those first four months. And just listen, your job is to take care of yourself. You know, you know, you know, Annetta had, it's my wife. Um, she was thrust in a situation, you know, that, you know, she gets a call. I mean, Cubby and I take the camper up to Michigan and, and, her and Juji are back still in Chicago and she gets a call or I call her saying I'm on the way to the hospital and having a heart attack. And then, you know, they send me the cath lab, <clears throat> excuse me. And then next thing she gets a call and saying, Hey, he's having another heart attack right now. As we speak, we have to race him upstairs. So she's getting on a plane, not knowing I'm, I'm going to be alive when she lands. Um, and so that in handling all that and then being forced into doing all these other roles in our family that I took care of, um, which weren't necessarily her strengths um, that it, she's been amazing. And I don't tell her nearly as much um, as I should. I hope she knows it, but um, I'll spend the rest of my life proving that to her and telling her that. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, um, so that was the first, but I felt like I was being protected, but from myself. Um, and then as time goes, I was not getting impatient, but I, some other things were happening and to the point where I was being, I felt like I was being called that same calling I've always had of God wanting more for me. Um, I saw this line um, and I saw my fear. There was this line that he was kind of showing me. It's like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to step over this line. Like you never have before. And you know, I was scared of it. I was, you know, I, I think I, the, the process has been longer cause I retreated from it and I don't know what I was fearful of again, knowing what was on the side, other side, it wasn't, that wasn't in question for me, but yet I was still fearful of, I don't know what the right words are taking the next step, um, becoming the person he intended me to be. I don't really don't have the right words for it, but I was clearly, clearly being called to step into something that I was uncomfortable mm -hmm. with or unsure of or afraid of. It was clear as day for me. And it was, it was scary and it was challenging. Um, and it's been months uh, of that tiptoeing it and, and then, you know, kind of avoiding it. And then we moved off the campground and I had that amazing group of people at the campground with me. And I guess 
as I got a little bit healthier, I kind of sugar coated things a little bit and made sure everybody thought I was okay. And, uh, uh, and, and when we got to the cabin, we rented <laughs> the first month and a half was not, I was caught off guard because all of a sudden now I'm, I have to confront all this. Um, mm-hmm. and all those questions again, um, it's like, why, why was I sent back? Why did you show me the things you so- showed me? If you're just going to send mm-hmm. me back. Um, and, and so over the last little while, it, that's slowly, the line's still there, but the line is blurred. It's not as scary for me. And, uh, I'm feeling more confident. Um, I'm feeling healthier. I'm feeling more comfortable in my faith. Um, in, in talking to Doug and, and working on the show. And I, I knew part of this was therapy for me doing this. It was part of the intent. Um, <clears throat> excuse me for, for coughing. Um, you know, I, anyway, I, I was, I was just being called and I, I, I saw the light at the end of the tunnel. I saw it turning. I now saw that other side. I saw the emergence of that other side, that person and that that person that God always intended me to be, the role I always intended me to for me to play. I don't know what that is yet. I don't know who that person is or what that role is, but I see it coming. I mm-hmm. know that he's been preparing, preparing me for it, and now that's kind of where I've been. So last Sunday, I've been watching Elevation Church online as part of the EFAM, and <clears throat> uh, kids were – sitting on the couch next to me doing stuff on the, their pads or whatever. And Annetta was at work. Um, and I put it on the big screen and, you know, I love the music and it was, it was the best day of music ever at the show. All my favorite songs is started with let's get loud. And, um, mm-hmm. and then I forgot the second one. I don't know if it was rattle or something, but it was just, it was just like, yeah, I was just like, <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And they took a break uh, to introduce something. And then they came back on with the song available um, and then, then, uh, same God, uh, they ended with same God, this new single and, you know, something happened. Um, and I don't, I don't know what, I don't understand what, so I need some help from Doug to figure this out. But I had some real re- revelations to this, uh, over the last couple of days too, is, um, I was a complete and utter mess my kids didn't have any idea what was going on. <laughs> I'm sitting there and they've seen me cry, but I was, I was unlike I've ever been. And I felt, I felt like it's going to sound silly, but <clears throat> I felt like the Holy spirit had entered me and the words to the songs. And, and I was just, I was just in a place and my eyes closed and I was looking up and I, I saw the same sensation I felt when I died um, and the light and the warmth and the, the, the peace that I experienced in that moment, I was experiencing again. And, and I was just, I I can't explain it. I was, it was just Mm -hmm. the most overwhelming, powerful moment of my life. And, um, you know, you know, hearing the words and then singing the words and just, you know, crying out to God, I guess I wasn't crying out. I was, I don't know. I, I can't really explain it. Um, uh, but it was, it was overwhelming and, um, I couldn't really explain it to you. I couldn't explain it to Annetta. Um, it was just something that happened and, and, I don't even know how to say this. Um, so as I was I was thinking about it, in talking with you, prepping for the show, uh, it was the realization that I was stepping over that line, mm-hmm. that I was trusting God in a way that I never had before, that 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 fear that had always been there from blocking me from the next level or the next step, st- next step of our relationship to, I don't know what, again, I don't have the right words for it, but that thing that had been there my entire life 
preventing me from going to wherever that is lifted. And, Mm -hmm. and, you know, it was overwhelming and, and not, I'm crying because it wasn't, I wasn't afraid. I wasn't afraid. It was just, it's just, again, oh, being overwhelmed by emotion and then reflecting on all the work God's done over my life, certainly, but over the last seven months and feeling it every day, feeling it, not that just there's all this stuff I'm just happening. It, it just, I felt it. And it was the realization that all this work is coming to, you know, is, is paying off and, and the next stage is coming. And, and mm-hmm. I, I just, I didn't realize it. I didn't realize what happened till we were talking. And I realized that I was trusting God in a way that I never had. And that fear was lifted. Yeah. And, and it was overwhelming and it's still overwhelming. It's still like surreal that I've waited my whole life for that moment. And it's here. And then something came to me earlier when I was talking to Annette about this, because again, I was apprehensive to share this and talk about this. Uh, sorry, I'm all snotty and uh, <laughs> sneezing now, but, uh, um, and this is why going back to the moment in the end, it was very clear when I was sitting there listening to the song and the lyrics and, and God was telling me to rise. I heard it so clearly that it, he used my word again. Well, it's his word, but you know, especially <laughs> now that I know it from before, but you know, yeah. I felt it and heard him telling me rise. And, 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 and his message to me, his words to me were you're ready. Yeah. And again, I don't know what that means. I don't know what's next. I don't know what's going to evolve from this or, uh, again, how I walk my faith, um, how I live that out loud. I don't know. I don't know the right words. I don't know what's next, but I'm ready. And, you know, I've crossed a line that, I don't know. It's, it's just so overwhelming. My heart's like, I'm you know, my heart's not good right now. Um, <laughs> it's just so overwhelming. And the only way I, I can explain it is, is the Holy Spirit. God was inside of me that moment. You know, as he always is, but this was just, he took over. Yeah. It's tangible. Yeah. Um, so again, I got through that actually better than I thought, but, um, I don't know. I'm still, it's just, just still so real, but you know, hearing him say to rise and, and tell me that I'm ready and thinking about all everything that's happened over the last seven months and the conversations I've had with him and the being patient and waiting and letting him do his work um, instead of getting in, in, in his way. Cause I wanted to do things very differently. I didn't want to be here. I wanted to be in Arizona. I wanted to do this. I wanted to do that. I want to be healthier. I want to try things. I let him and I'm proud of myself for that. I got to acknowledge myself for knowing what was happening and letting God do the work. And he still has a lot of work to do, but um. Yeah, uh, you know, that's kind of Let that's me, kind of what happened. And I guess I'm it, maybe I made made too of a too much of a build up of this segment. No, no, uh, it's perfect. But um, anyway, let me let me let me put some uh, ink ink to paper on this um, because it's a it's a it's a good situation, and it it there's there's a reality there's a present reality that's unfolding before you uh, the best way I could say it is, you know, and I, I think I mentioned this to you when you first ex- explained what you were experiencing, which is Jesus said in John chapter four, he said, those who worship God must worship, worship him in spirit and in truth. God is spirit. And if we're to worship him, we must worship him in spirit and in truth. So there's two aspects of that. One of which is by the spirit. There's, there's no other way to come to God except for him drawing us to himself. Man doesn't seek after God. That's what the scriptures say. You know, we're doing our own thing. We're going our own way. You know, and we've talked about this in our stories tonight, where it's just God was in process of, of bringing us to him to be in relationship with him. So part of that happens in the spirit. And the other part is truth, which is important also that we understand that, um, he, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Um, so part of that is he's truth. Part of that is the Bible is truth. Uh, Jesus said it in John uh, 17, 17, he said, thy word is truth. 
Um, so there's what you were experiencing is a combination of, of being drawn to God in the spirit, um, but also in truth. And Psalm 22, three says that God inhabits the praises of his people. So it's not a strange thing to me that you were worshiping like literal worship music. And you had this in, in a sense, an encounter with God, right? He shows up in a very tangible way. Like you can feel it. You know that he's there. It's inside. It's outside. It's all around you. And so you're experiencing the reality of you worship. He inhabits your worship and, and, and you had that ex experience. The other thing that goes along with it is in Romans chapter one, it says that, I, and I'm going to paraphrase here, but the gist of the middle part of the passage uh, of scripture in Romans one says, whenever God reveals himself, it requires a response. Now, what happens in our lives, like you were talking about in your testimony about God, you know, kind of wanting more of you, right? Always. And you're like, let me go, let me go. And God's like, no, <laughs> you know, he, he kept revealing himself. But when we don't respond in the way that he's wanting us to respond, sometimes our hearts get hardened. And that's what that passage in Romans talks about. It says they worship the creature instead of the creator. God showed himself in nature to be who he is. And, and, but they chose not to respond in the way that they should. So you actually responded with surrender and with faith. And that's what God is looking for, right? So that's why fear got out of the way because you said, yes, you essentially in that moment said, all right, Lord, I don't know what it looks like, but I, that's what faith is. Faith is, you know, the evidence of things not seen, uh, you know, the assurance of things hoped for. And, and even though you, we don't oftentimes know what it looks like, we say yes, and that's what it takes for us to experience and encounter God in that type of way. And so, um, yeah, I mean, you're, you, you just had an encounter with God. Uh, you'll continue to have encounters with God um, as you continue to say yes, as I continue to say yes. Uh, he reveals more of himself. He reveals more of the plan. He reveals more of the identity of who we are. That's how we... Um, develop our relationship with God is just by constantly saying yes when he's asking us to say yes, whatever it looks like. Sometimes again, sight unseen, but that's faith. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I remember the, you know, the, the, the song available was playing and uh, there's a part that she's singing here. I am mm -hmm. um, just, I remember his feeling and here I am. You can have it all. You know, and it was just yeah. a, you know, it was, it was, again, I can't, well, um, yeah, there's a lot more <laughs> to go through. Um, uh, you know, I, you know, we survived this. I'm going to switch. This One step at a time. Yeah. Um, so, uh, a little under two hours, not, not too bad. Um, a couple things, uh, we still have, you know, many people on, um, not many, but you know, it'll, it'll grow. Um, yeah. you know, I, I'm excited for this. I mean, this was a big weight. You know, there was, a, there's been a lightness to me since that Sunday. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, life has been different since then for me, um, in the way I see the world and look at the world and, um, in my relationship with God. And so I'm excited obviously for me and I'm, and for, for all that and what's coming, uh, for me, but, uh, I'm excited for the show. Um, I'm excited what we're going to be able to do and talk about. And, you know, there's going to be a lot of times we're just laughing and jamming with music and all this stuff. And, um, but I appreciate the, the opportunity and having the platform to share our lives with, with the world and each other and, and so forth. And, um, I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to it. And I think next week, uh, can I make an executive decision here, Doug? Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, simplifying the show a little bit next week, um, and diving into the family, uh, one of those five foundational identities of the church. Um, and then, you know, not making people wait and so forth. I think going through this, uh, telling my full story next week, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and kind of dividing, dividing up the show into those two main segments, 
Um, cause there's gonna be a lot of questions, a lot of things that you're going to want to say. Um, and I don't know how emotional it will be. There are certainly it's hard things and it's going to be hard to get through it all. Um, but maybe not as hard as it has been at times. Um, I don't know. There's again, it, it may, other questions may, the same questions may resurface after telling it. I don't know. Um, I, again, I, I don't have the answers to what happened still. And I don't know why I was sent back again. It's just me saying, I'm going to trust you and yeah follow follow where you lead me and, and 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 go through those open doors you know god somebody i don't know said it actually tim if he's still on you know said this and other people have said it obviously too but you know god opens doors he opens doors yeah. and provides opportunities but you have to walk through it yeah. you may walk through Absolutely. it holding your hand but mm -hmm. you have to you have to walk through it you have to do the work and get there and uh surrender to god and and bring him with you and he'll lead you but he, you you have to walk through the door Absolutely, um, and this is this this show and and all this is, is part of that, um, and you know that release of that fear and realizing that I had stepped across that line is, is all part of that. So I'm, I'm I'm excited for the show. I'm excited what we can do um, with it. I'm excited for the fun we're gonna have. I hope people like it. I hope they respond to it. But if yeah. they don't, I, you know, I'm st we're gonna still do it because I get to talk to you and ask the Absolutely. questions and talk about music and food and all that stuff. So um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so next week we'll kind of get into those two things. I'll